So I want to thank you all for spending your afternoon <coughs> with me. Um, I want to talk about the important topic of antibiotic resistance. It's a growing problem, and the best way that we can combat this issue is through education. So I put together this little presentation for you. So by the end of the, um, the presentation, I have a few objectives I'd like you to meet. I'd like for you to be able to identify what antibiotic resistance is, identify the difference between bacteria and viruses, describe how antibiotics work, explain how antibiotic resistance occurs, identify why antibiotic resistance is a problem, <coughs> Explain how to de determine if an antibiotic is actually necessary and describe how we can prevent <coughs> antibiotic resistance in the future. So, what is antibiotic resistance? It's due to the overuse <coughs> and misuse of antibiotics. Every time a person takes antibiotics, sensitive bacteria are killed, and resistant ones are left to grow and multiply. The overuse and misuse of antibiotics threatens the usefulness of the actual drug itself. Antibiotic resistance <coughs> is a growing problem, not only in the United States, but also worldwide. But the good news is it's a modifiable problem, meaning we can, you know, we can fix it before it becomes an issue. So, bacteria versus viruses. Um, what are, what's the difference? Bacteria is a single-celled organism found all over the inside and outside of the body. Not all bacteria are harmful. You have good bacteria that actually lives in your gut. So disease-causing bacteria causes illness, such as strep throat. And I put a little picture of Larkin, my little girl here. We were actually at the clinic a couple weeks ago for strep throat. Viruses are microbes, and microbes are a lot smaller than bacteria. Um, they cause illness by invading healthy cells of your body. And here are microbes. <coughs> so how do antibiotics work? <coughs> antibiotics work by killing bacteria or stopping them from multiplying. There's broad spectrum antibiotics that um, cover a wide variety of organisms, like penicillin. And there's narrow spectrum, which are more specific, like vancomycin. <coughs> Before the discovery of antibiotics, bacterial infections were often fatal. Um, so before antibiotics, 90% of children who uh, contracted bacterial meningitis died. Among those who did live, um, most had severe and lasting disabilities, either from mental retardation all the way to deafness. So back, um, antibiotics really are a wonder drug. They just have to be used the right way. So true or false, antibiotics treat viruses. False. You're right. False. Antibiotics treat the bacterial infections, not viruses. So how does antibiotic resistance happen? Um, I've got this diagram here. So if you look, you've got a lot of different germs here. A few of them are drug resistant. Um, you put antibiotics in play, and the antibiotics kill bacteria, um, causing the antibiotics kill bacteria, causing the illness, as well as good bacteria protecting the body from the infection. So it's not only killing the bad, it's killing the good as well. And what's left over is are these drug resistant bacteria. They're allowed to grow and take over, and they can actually pass on their drug resistance to other bacteria. So that's how it's like a, a vicious cycle. Is that so, why, like, you should eat, um, like, if you, what happens when you, um, like, when, like, if you need to eat yogurt or something, they say it takes all the bacteria out. Yeah, you're just replacing yeah, the good bacteria. Because it's killed yeah. the good and the bad. Well, yeah. Yogurt okay. then? It's, it's yogurt killing. replaces the good. So, like, if you're prone to get yeast infections when you take, like, a strong antibiotic, they say eat yogurt mm -hmm. while you're taking the antibiotic to prevent that. Yeah. Remember, you've got healthy bacteria mm -hmm. in the gut. 
Well, whatever you take antibiotics, it gets rid of that good bacteria too. So eating that yogurt is going to help with that issue. And I'll actually kind of touch base on that in just a little bit um, to let you know what the worst case scenario is. So why does antibiotic resistance happen? Um, well, first of all, it's the overuse. At least 30% of antibiotic courses prescribed in the outpatient setting are unnecessary. Um, and then it's also due to total inappropriate use of antibiotics, such as the wrong dose, the wrong drug, and the wrong duration. So who all takes their antibiotics for like the full course, like what they tell you to? Oh, that's, good. that's good. You're going to take it till I feel better. Yeah. Yeah, you are harming You yourself. are contributing to this problem. <laughs> yeah. So that antibiotic that you don't finish, whenever they prescribe it down the road, it's probably not going to work as well as it did. So um, you'll either have to take it, you know, longer to feel better or we're going to have to do something else for you. I save it for later. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're going to get we're sick again. Get <laughs> that too. That's another thing you're no, not no, supposed no, to do. No. <laughs> So here's uh, two good examples of uh, misuse and overuse. Um, this 40-year-old uh, woman here is diagnosed with bronchitis, and she's prescribed an antibiotic, even though national guidelines recommend against prescribing antibiotics for bronchitis. So that is unnecessary, and it's overuse. And then we have misuse and incorrect prescriptions. So this 8-year-old little boy, he's diagnosed with strep throat, and he needs an antibiotic to treat it, but the antibiotic prescribed is the wrong dose, or the dose is too low, or the duration is too long, or short. It can be too short as well. All right, so I also have a map of the um, the rate of prescribing, the prescribing rates of antibiotics in the United States. And good old Mississippi is dark red, so you know how we rate first in all the good things yeah. and all the bad things. Um, we actually have one of the highest. Here in the uh, southeast is the highest. Probably related to our sinus infections or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We feel bad for them. Mm -hmm. Well, and a lot of people around here, they demand when they go to the doctor, they're not leaving without an antibiotic. Right. Like, you don't need it. But they're like, I paid my copay. I'm leaving here with the drugs. Right. So. so what if you're if you have this antibiotic, even if, if it's not good for whatever you've got, like for instance bronchitis? Mm -hmm. And you take this antibiotic anyway, could you become resistant to this antibiotic or something yes. that you sometime when you really need right. it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The more you use the antibiotic, the more your body's gonna adjust to it. So mm -hmm. it's not good thing. No. So um, why does it happen? Um, antibiotics are also given to food producing animals and crops. So um, that's our little cow here. <laughs> Drug resistant antibiotics are transferred, uh, transferred to our food. So they're fed the antibiotics. We meet that drug resistant um, bacteria is transferred to our guts where it stays. So. What about when you see these meats and it says no antibiotics? Is what you mean by? Yeah. That's what we <laughs> really mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. And that big long chicken leg, you know, it's injected with something because it's that drum yeah. pig uh -huh. is huge. Right. They, That's they feed chicken. Chicken yeah. these days are not supposed to be as big as they should be. They just get more meat off of them because they're feeding on antibiotics mm -hmm. to get them bigger um, mm -hmm. so they can produce more, you know. So, uh, when do we need antibiotics? Mm -hmm. I'll do a little, little uh, test here on you. Uh, I'm just going to call out an illness and you guys let me know if you do or do not need antibiotics for this. So, uh, what about a cold or a runny nose? Do you think you need antibiotics? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. I don't know. No. Yes. Just a cold or a runny nose? No. no. No, you do not need antibiotics. Mm -hmm. What about bronchitis or a chest cold? No. No, no you're wrong. No. Wow. <laughs> bronchitis and you don't need the antibiotics? You got me. <laughs> you just don't have to treat your symptoms. Yeah. Um, whooping cough. No. Yes. Yes. Do you? Yes. yes. That's what kids have, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, what about the flu? No. No, no you don't need it. Yes. All right, what about strep throat? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, you do. And then, like, then we did get antibiotics the other day when I brought you Larkin. Um, what about just a sore throat? No. Uh, 
fluid in the middle ear? No. No. But I thought it was so strange. How well, long? I put that you got one every yeah. time. How I many times? How many yes. times have you got antibiotics? Every time I took it. Because I had to go back to work. Yeah. Because see, she kept that fever, and that fluid was just trapped in that middle ear. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, they didn't want to give it to her, though. But I would take her right back. What about a UTI? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so here's a nice diagram that the CDC put out, and it's basically what we just went over. It just tells you yes or no if you need antibiotics or not. And I thought this was really cool. I actually saw this whenever I took Larkin to the clinic. It was hanging up um, in the exam room. So uh, it's a good way that they're educating the patients as they're sitting there waiting, probably thinking about what antibiotic they want to be prescribed. They can see that on the wall and see that they actually might not need it. Yeah. So, uh, one of these for the community. <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> and like, we need to set up at the Lee Mall. <laughs> so what are, here. Yeah, what are the dangers of resistance? So a growing number of infections such as pneumonia, tuberculosis, and gonorrhea, they're all becoming harder to treat because the antibiotics that used to treat them are not working as well. They've just adjusted to it. And um, now we have superbugs such as C. diff. Mm -hmm. Which happens, you know, whenever you're on antibiotic, you're killing all that good that good stuff in your gut, and then see this can happen. Antibiotic resistance also leads to a longer hospital stay, higher medical costs, and increased mortality. So I've got this picture here. Um, this is Peggy Willis. Um, just wanted to put like a face of the put a face to the, the issue and the danger of antibiotic resistance. Um, Peggy Lilly, she was a 56-year-old school teacher. Her friends and family described her as being healthy as a horse. Um, she went in to have a, a root canal done and they put her on clindamycin. Um, from then on, um, she started having some stomach issues, some diarrhea. Well, she uh, then was diagnosed with C. diff. So, um, C. diff ended up making her septic, um, having the bloodborne infection, and then she eventually went into cardiac arrest at the hospital when she was being treated, and she passed away. So, her family now has the Peggy Lillis Foundation, um, where they're educating the community on the uh, dangers of antibiotic resistance. I better not say my antibiotic name. <laughs> So, how can we, what can we do to prevent resistance? So, um, you need to ask your healthcare provider what, what can you do to stop or slow down antibiotic resistance. Um, let them know that you're actually concerned about this. Ask your healthcare professional if there are any steps that you can take to feel better and uh, to get relief from your symptoms without using antibiotics. So sometimes the best treatment for your illness may be relieving your symptoms, not an antibiotic. And take the prescribed antibiotic exactly as your healthcare professional tells you. Hmm. <laughs> if it's taken improperly, antibiotics are more likely to cause harm. Hmm. Also, I don't have no CD depth up in here. <laughs> I think you would, you would know if you did. Oh, yeah. Uh, safely discard any leftover medication. Mm -hmm. um, the, food and the, the Food and Drug Administration provides helpful tips on how to do this. Um, so you can go to their website and they can tell you how to dispose of your antibiotics. I don't do that. I just recently <laughs> gave Ashley an antibiotic that was in my refrigerator mm -hmm. the other day, not long ago. <laughs> Ask your healthcare professional about vaccines recommended for you and your family. Vaccines are an effective way to prevent infections that may require an antibiotic. And vaccines are also are, are also as important, um, it's also an important way to keep diseases from spreading. So what should we not do? <laughs> Never take an antibiotic for a viral infection like a cold or the flu. Antibiotics do not cure viral infections such as colds, the flu, most
most sore throats, most coughs and bronchitis or chest colds, many sinus infections, and many ear infections. Never pressure your healthcare professional to prescribe an antibiotic. A, a lot of that happens. We always want a quick fix. Like, we don't want to go home with our child and actually have to suffer through the next three right. days. So, we can't afford it. No. <laughs> it, does, it does make it hard for us working mm -hmm. moms. Never skip doses or stop taking an, an antibiotic early, even if you no longer feel sick, unless your healthcare professional tells you to. You know, you may be having a reaction or something and you should listen and not take it. Well, what if you're taking an antibiotic for whatever you're take, it was prescribed for, and then after you're taking it for a little bit, it's either going to tear your stomach up mm -hmm. or the reverse, make you severely constipated. So yeah. now you can't take yeah. it for that problem. Mm -hmm. You just need to talk. Get any better. Yeah, you need to talk with your healthcare professional about it. Um, maybe there'll be something else that'll work better for you, or maybe they can treat your symptoms while you're on the antibiotic. Um, and never save antibiotics for the next time you become sick, and do not take antibiotics prescribed for someone else. Because someone else... She's looked at my medicine chest, and she... Someone, you know, whenever they um, dose out the antibiotic, you know, it may be based off your weight. It may be based off of what they think you need it for. Well, the next person that you give it to might not meet those requirements. Um, taking the wrong medicine may delay correct treatment, allow bacteria to multiply, and cause unwanted or severe side effects, discard any leftover medication. Do you guys have any questions? So, I thought I was prescribed, is Tamiflu not an antibiotic? I thought I was prescribed an antibiotic Tamiflu for the flu. That's a common misconception. Tamiflu is actually an antiviral. Oh, so, mm -hmm. that, and it doesn't really help either, does it? Because they tell you. <laughs> they tell you. Yeah, you got to take start it. start within yeah. 48 hours. I, I believe it. Because if you take it, it's going to run seven, what, seven days? And if you don't take it, it's going to run... What? It's supposed to shorten your symptoms. I think it's five days, isn't it? But you got to take it within a five days. You have to start and start. So if you've been feeling terrible for five days, you might as well just start it out. Well, thank y'all for listening. I hope you learned a lot. I did. Thank you.